The Queen looked delighted to be returned to normal duty after the sad news of her beloved pet Vulcan passing away a few weeks ago. For the past 70 years, thousands of people have bowed and curtsied to the Queen, but until yesterday, December the 4th, 2020, none had done so as the monarch peered at them from 20 miles away via a computer screen. Never one to shy away from new experiences, the Queen held her first virtual audience at Buckingham Palace from Windsor Castle, signalling that for now, this was the new royal normal. Her Majesty broke new ground as she hosted three ambassadors to the UK, her first audiences at Buckingham Palace since March. The 94-year-old monarch has been staying with her husband, Prince Philip, 99, at the Berkshire residence during the pandemic and announced earlier this week that they will remain at Windsor Castle for Christmas, foregoing the annual royal gathering at Sandringham. Speaking to the press, a palace spokesman said, Diplomatic audiences are a long-standing and traditional part of the monarchy's role and the hope has always been to restart them as soon as possible. A variety of options were considered in line with current guidelines to reintroduce diplomatic audiences while retaining some of the long-established ceremonial elements such as the use of Buckingham Palace. A spokesman added, At this time, in line with medical advice, Her Majesty will conduct diplomatic audiences virtually from Windsor Castle. For the occasion, the Queen held three separate diplomatic audiences, with Sophie Katsarava, Ambassador of Georgia, Gil da Costa, Ambassador of Timor-Leste, also known as East Timor, and Ferninek Cumin, Ambassador of Hungary, and his wife, Victoria Cumin. The diplomats were taken to the Escheries room at Buckingham Palace, where they were introduced to the Queen, who beamed at them from a computer screen adorned with a video camera from the Oak Room at Windsor Castle. Dressed in a pale blue dress, the monarch looked delighted to be returning to normal duties, of sorts, chatting animatedly to the diplomats. Each ambassador presented their credentials to the monarch, by leaving them on a table next to the computer screen, from which they will be collected and sent to Windsor Castle. According to the information provided by the palace, diplomatic audiences have remained almost unchanged since the Victorian era, with ambassadors still collected from their embassy or residence in a state lando, a ceremonial horse-drawn carriage, and taken to Buckingham Palace to present their credentials to the Queen. Tradition was followed for today's unique event, with the top diplomats enjoying a horse-drawn ride through the streets of London to the monarch's official residence. It comes after reports revealed yesterday that the Queen was grieving by the death of her beloved Vulcan, who passed away a few weeks ago at Windsor Castle. Her Majesty is thought to be upset at the loss, which leaves her with only one dog left, Cindy, who is also a doggy. According to Daily Mail's royal correspondent, Rebecca English, the Queen is mourning the loss of one of her last two remaining dogs just weeks before Christmas. Loyal companion Vulcan, a dashhound corgi cross, died a few weeks ago at Windsor. On Twitter, English also noted that Vulcan's death leaves the British monarch with just one remaining animal, Candy, also a doggy. Earlier this week, it was announced that the Queen and Prince Philip will spend Christmas quietly at Windsor Castle. The couple traditionally spend the festive season with close friends at Sandringham, but this year they will forego the festivities and remain at Windsor Castle, where they have been isolating with a bubble of staff since October. It is understood the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh will not take advantage of the relaxed Covid restrictions to form a Christmas bubble with other households. It means the couple face spending Christmas Day without any of their four children for the first time since 1949.